Uh, this is Isaac Lam. Uh, I'm one of the board directors of the Hong Kong Jewish Film Festival. Uh, and today we are very honored to have uh, Danny Mankin, uh, the film director of uh, Picture of His Life and Aussie, uh, in which the two films will be showing uh, in our festival online uh, next month. Uh, so uh, I'm very excited to hear from Danny. So uh, Danny, could you uh, talk a little bit about uh, what Picture of His Life is about? Yes, Picture of His Life is a movie that I've done with my uh, creator partner uh, for Dolphin Boy. And it's a story about a wildlife photographer that uh, has uh, the ultimate goal. And it is to take a picture of a polar bear underwater without protections. He took all the biggest predators on earth and he has done it, but could not succeed with the polar bear. And that was his life mission. While we were shooting this movie, we wanted to also learn more about his personal story. So it is also a quest to learn more about the character while he's, you know, trying to take the picture of his life. Right. Um, so your earlier film, uh, Dolphin Boy, uh, also used ocean as a setting. Uh, is there any relationship between a uh, picture of his life and the Dolphin Boy? Yes, the Dolphin Boy and Picture of His Life I've done with the same uh, partner, Jonathan Neal, and uh, we really wanted to tap into the same theme, which is relationship between father and son, uh, PTSD, I mean, post-traumatic uh, dissociation and, and recovering from, from that uh, from different reasons. I mean, in Dolphin Boy, it was uh, recovering from bullying, and in uh, Picture of His Life, it was from... Uh, um, somebody who sh sh uh, just uh, saw all the horrors in the Israeli army in 1973. So those two things came across and uh, we try to also show the healing power of nature. And I think the beauty of the story of Amos that he transformed from somebody who carried the gun because he had to protect his country, but he has faced horrible things uh, to somebody who is now carry the camera and from a soldier of mother nature, he, from a soldier in the Israeli army, I'm sorry, he became a soldier of mother nature. Right, yeah. So um, you shot the film in such an extreme environment and, um, and those like really amazing close up of uh, polar bears. And uh, can you tell, tell us a little bit about like all these like technical difficulties uh, while you're shooting the film? And uh, in terms of uh, cinematography, uh, how is this film different from other documentaries you have made before? I think the biggest technique that we used is the Amos pictures because they were iconic pictures and beautiful ones. And we wanted to have them leading the story uh, instead of just having um, like um, uh, talking heads, like conventional talking heads in, in the documentary. So that was part of one, one decision that we have made also, uh, we have uh, partnered with uh, Adam Ravich, who is uh, one of the biggest wildlife uh, cinematographer. And uh, he was with us over there and he's a character in the movie. And he was diving with Amos under the water. Now we didn't have a lot of control under the water. In fact, we had no control of what happened under the water because we were above the water. But it was important for us when we we're making a movie about the photographer is to make it feel beautiful, <laughs> look beautiful, and, and, and make us feel, you know, the emotions that he was trying to convey with his art. So we kind of tried to synergize between his art and our mm -hmm. art, which is the movie. And that's what is a picture of his life with choosing that title we're saying he is shooting the picture of his life, but we are telling the story of him. So this is the picture of his life from our point of view as well. So uh, that was kind of like a, a wonderful collaboration that uh, both Jonathan Nir and I had with Amos Nahum, with Adam Ravich, in order to make the film, um, make justice to the beauty of the pictures that Amos brings to the world. Mm. It's very interesting. You talk about like a different angle and the multi layers of perspective, like your perspective and a director's uh, and a photographer's uh, perspective. Uh, I was just wondering, like in terms of sound, uh, 
in every scene of the film seems to have a particular begin with a particular sound. Um, is that intentional? And what is uh, how does sound work? We, we, we worked on the sound with uh, both com composer uh, Christopher Gubisch that uh, worked with me on uh, 39 Pounds of Love and on Olsi and with the uh, incredible sound designer that worked with me on, on many movies, uh, Philip Gosland. And yes, we were thinking about what are the main themes, what are the themes of the polar bear, what are the th themes of the fear, what is the theme, theme of the harmony, the love, the relationship between the father and the son. Uh, so all those things we were uh, putting into place and we were keeping in mind while we were uh, designing the score. Mm -hmm. So you know, you're making films many times in, in the research, in the script, and people think documentary don't have a script, they do. <laughs> and, and, and in the shooting, in the editing, and a lot of the elements that are very important to filmmaking are happening in the sound design. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, one thing I found it really amazing is that, like you know, the uh, the story uh, begins with a photographer, you know, Amos Neco, uh, and then it links to a much broader issues about life, about nature, about politics. Um, so I was just wondering uh, how this is personal life. Uh, which you talk about, like you know, his uh, Israeli upbringing, uh, his participation in the Yom Kippur War, and his uh, complex relationship with his father and his daughter. How does all these stories kind of, uh, you know, inform you about life and death? And uh, how did this kind of storyline and you know, uh, and his personality and relationship evolve as a, uh, you know, uh, as you were developing the project? You know, I believe that everything in life affects everything in life. It's like a spiral. It's like a wave. Uh, if we want to make it like a metaphor of the ocean. So the relationship with his father, the relationship with, with the Israeli army and the trauma that he faced and the, and the transformation that he has made, you know, from being a soldier to becoming a soldier of, of Mother Nature and trying to bring that message to the world. Everything affects everything. There is not one reason why Amos has, is choosing such an, such an unconventional life. In, 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 in our view, there are so many other reasons and we wanted to bring them all into place. Yeah. And we wanted to show that it really is, as you said, it's broader than just one reason. It's not yeah. just that. It's not just because he wants to show his father. It's not just because he's post-traumatic from the army. And it's not just because he's trying to bring a message of harmony and tell something about the environment. I think it's all of those. And it's not just that he may have, as some people say, death wish, and, or, or he's pushing the envelope. It's not all, I mean, it, it could be elements of many, many other things. And he's very much motivated, super charismatic person that say, hey, you know, with this mission, I can bring a message. And um, I believe the world needs that message. And that's why we were here putting all this time, energy, and money <laughs> into making picture of his life. Yeah, which is uh, one, one of the things that I love the film the most, like it really teases out all this complexity, complexity about life. Um, so uh, my next question is like, you know, I think he's like, you know, really highly successful and he challenged himself and captured all these uh, amazing pictures with the polar bears. Um, but his personal life seems to be quite uh, going into quite a different direction. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the dynamic between his family and his career? And um, how does he kind of value uh, success? And uh, how does uh, his story kind of inform you about uh, the notion of the sex. Yeah, and, 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 and as we mentioned, you know, there were two stories in, in, in this film, there were two storylines. And there was the personal story and there was the mission to go to shoot the polar bear underwater. And in some ways, it was the sister that gave us the idea that uh, the polar bear can symbolize things that are related to his personal life, that in some ways the father is the polar bear, or maybe Amos himself is the polar bear, and maybe he's one is trying to make peace with himself 
So by putting all those elements together, we could kind of close a nice circle at the end when we have that climax scene uh, in, in, in the movie. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, which goes to the question of like, um, uh, you know, your experience uh, shooting in the Canadian high Arctic, uh, you know, which uh, the place really took you out of, the, you know, the ordinary context and, um, you know, uh, so I was just wondering how you make sense of your, your life and your identity in such extreme environment. And the reason I ask that is that, um, you know, I think for me being resilient and being uh, able to survive plays an important role uh, of shaping the Jewish identity. And um, so how do you think like his story echoes to his Jewishness? I, you know, I, I always view the world and, and uh, my Jewishness as something that is part of the universal thing of, 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 of uh, the human race, let's, let's call it uh, for lack of a better word, because I, I, I don't like to say, okay, because we're Jewish, we're like that, or because we're not, we're like that. I mean, but we are, you know, or, or I will say I, 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 as a Jewish person, I'm, I'm trying to be the best version of myself. And we made a, we made a joke that, you know, uh, in the movie, you know, one of our executive producer is uh, the, my wonderful partner, Nancy Spielberg. She has been with me in so many other projects in, 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 on the map with, with the Alsi. And um, her brother, uh, Steven Spielberg, has made the movie Jaws. And then some people say that Jaws maybe put some, some gave some bad reputation to uh, the Great White Shark. And uh, in some ways, what Amos is doing is the opposite of Jaws. And he's trying to show that, you know, uh, big, scary animals are not really like that. And we just need to understand them and live with them. And they are part of our world. And uh, we were there uh, in the Arctic for Jewish people. You know, it was Adam Ravich, Amos Nahum, Yonatan Nir from the Kibbutz in Israel, and Danny Menkin from the Kibbutz in Los Angeles. <laughs> and we were all um, Jewish. So at some point, we thought maybe we should call the movie Jews, <laughs> just to give <laughs> some kind of a feedback to Jaws. Um, but I, I, I really think that, you know, uh, Amos does view himself as a universal person and uh, and the fact that he is uh, Jewish and he's a very proud Israeli and he fought for the country uh, affected him to become who he has uh, become that's why we're we're doing so many Jewish film festivals but we're doing also very much a lot of environmental film festivals and uh, and I'm, I'm happy that we can see uh, the theme and, and also I will say that, the fact that he took uh, the horror from the Yom Kippur War, that the country is, I would say even until today, suffering from post-trauma, as a country, suffering from post-trauma from the war, and uh, he took it for, to the positive, also can reflect to um, the greatest of uh, humankind. How can you take the, the negative and transform it to, into a positive? Right. Uh, I think it echoes to what, at the beginning, you talk about life. Right, an ocean, and I think Jewishness is also like somehow echoes to that kind of notion of a complexity, and it has a lot of different versions, and it's also quite universal. Right, right. Um, um, my last question is like, um, uh, do you have any specific things you want to talk to uh, Hong Kong audiences? Um, the reason I uh, ask that is like, uh, in a way, your films really touch on the notion of displacement. Um, which uh, I think like that really echoes to the history of Hong Kong, uh, which is a migration city. Uh, our life is always uh, mediated by, you know, uh, different forms of politics and culture, uh, which is also uh, in a way, uh, the notion of a displacement. Uh, so um, I was just wondering if you have any thoughts about, um, you know, how your films may potentially uh, evoke a you know, particular sensitivity for Hong Kong audiences. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always um, humble, amazed, and, and happy, and very much content when I found out that my films are 
been seen in so many places in the world and they're touching people's life and people's heart. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I can't wait to come in person. I mean, I'm, I'm in Los Angeles now and I can't wait to come in person and visit you guys uh, in Hong Kong. And to all of you guys who want to uh, see some of my films, you are welcome to reach out to us at heyjudeproductions.com. This is our website. It's like the Beatles song, Hey Jude, uh, productions.com. And it comes from the line of the Beatles, take a sad song and make it better. I always like to find stories that have all those elements of the bitter and the sweet uh, together. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very much uh, honored. Uh, when we finished On The Map, we kind of opened a non-for-profit foundation to tell good, positive, non-political stories from Israel. So um, whoever will go to our pageyouthproductions.com website will be able to come, watch our movie, uh, support, uh, but mainly reach out. I mean, we, we, we love to be in touch with, with people all over the world and we love to answer. We always answer and um, I would love to do something uh, down the road uh, with you guys as well. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm really thankful for the opportunity. I mean, I'm, I'm not taking this for granted. And uh, I, I, I would love to do more with you guys and uh, to show more of my films uh, with you guys as well. Yeah, we would totally love to invite you to come to Hong Kong uh, next year or anytime sooner. Yeah. Um, so Absolutely. thank you very much uh, for doing the interview and telling us about all these amazing stories of the films. Uh, so um, we'll, you know, keep in touch and tell you how your film, you know, will be received in Hong Kong. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure.